If you're a film buff like me, there are certain films that as soon as you see them, an image comes to mind. And one of them is one of my favorite films, All About Eve, perhaps the greatest movie about the theater. But what a lot of people don't know is most of the classic scenes in that film were shot in San Francisco at the historic Curran Theater. Well, that historic stage is now undergoing an incredible restoration and renovation, but while work is going on in the house, on the stage is quite an incredible series of plays and performances called Curran on Stage. Here to tell us about it, Greg Backstrom from The Curran. How are you? Hi, good. Thanks, David. So what is it like doing theater on a stage with the audience on stage? I mean, besides being a little cramped. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is a little cramped, but uh, it's very intimate, and it's just really cool. There hasn't been... It's so unusual to, to be able to take the stage of a theater and make it essentially a black box theater and have the audience and the artists on stage together. You know, everyone enters through the stage door. That iconic stage yeah. door from the opening of All About Eve. Yeah, and so you walk down an alley and you enter. And, um, and you know, depending on the show, they're all different and they're all set up differently. But, you know, you are on stage of a beautiful 1,600-seat theater and sometimes staring out of the theater, sometimes not, you know, with the chandelier down. Um, it's been a... I think everybody who's come through the door has been uh, inspired. Yeah, I think that's a good word. I mean, I'm a theater person, obviously you are, and being in a unique theatrical experience is something that doesn't happen all the time. We all go into theaters and we see the curtain rise, but I can't recall ever going into a theater and being on stage with the actors and it actually being on the stage. Yeah. Now, this is very much the brainchild of Carol Shorenstein Hayes. Mm -hmm. And for those people who don't know her reputation, besides being a Broadway producer, she has brought Broadway to San Francisco. And this is the theater she owns. And she has won 20, 30 Tony Awards. She was one of the producers for Fun Home, Best Musical yeah. 2015, yeah. Uh, co-producer of The Audience with Helen Mirren, co-producer of Wolf Hall. She's got quite a track record. Mm -hmm. What is it like working with someone that machine gun creative. She's incredible. I mean, Carol is an artistic uh, genius, I would uh -huh, say. Uh -huh. And so, you know, seeing, working with her and being able to work with her, um, even on this, you know, small scale of what we're doing has been incredible. I mean, that she's been able to sort of curate and select these shows that are on this much different scale, but on this, they're all so inventive and... Uh, really artistic um, has been great. It's been a little bit crazy making, though, I'm sure. I mean, was there ever a point when you thought, how on earth are we going to do yeah, this? Yeah, when Carol said, <laughs> Carol said, she was like, you know what, we should, we're doing this renovation, and we were sort of figuring out the schedule of the renovation, and, you know, it turned out that the stage and the auditorium itself, because the, the bulk of the renovation is the front of house area, so the lobbies and the bathrooms, it's all about the bathrooms. Um, and so when we were plotting it out, it sort of, it was like, well, you know, there's not going to be a lot happening in the house for a while. And, uh, and Carol said, well, you know, what, let's not, you know, what if we do shows on stage? Like, let's not keep it dark. Let's keep people coming in um, and keeping the brand active and keeping, you know, allowing the community to come in and see the theater in a way they never have before. So I said, that's great. It'll be really difficult, but it, it's a great idea. And you know, we are making it happen. Yeah, she did, yeah did. I, I think uh, my, my perception of Carol is when you say it's going to be really difficult, but we'll make it happen, she only hears, we'll, we'll make yeah, it happen. right, of course, <laughs> of course. And, you know, it's so, uh, other places close down, and they close down for a renovation. And who would think it was, you know, smart to, to put something on stage and, you know, not, like, 150 seats, or less than that, 130 seats in this house for very short runs, um, doesn't make a lot of economic sense, mm -hmm. but it's to just you know keep the keep people coming in to give them this experience to you know that that's only kind of a once in a lifetime thing. Well, y you just took the words out of my mouth. It is a once in a lifetime piece of theater history. I mean, the hundred or f fifty or so people who come to see these plays, they will say we were the only people that saw production on the stage yeah. of the current while yeah. it was being renovated. Yeah, what makes that? 
theater special. I mean, I went on and on about one of my favorite films, All About Eve. Yeah, but All About it's, Eve. It's, it's more than it just about uh, All About Eve. There's a lot of history in that theater. A lot of famous people have tread the boards there. A lot there. of famous people have been in there. And you know what? It's really been, I think it was built in 1922, and it's pretty much been in operation as a theatrical venue ever since. And with a very successful, successful runs, um, everyone has played it. And it's, it's really, even, I mean, what we're doing right now is very intimate, but even when it's 1,600 seats, it's still a really intimate house. Um, and from what I know from coming from New York, it was everybody wanted to play the current. I mean, it's a, it's a great stage to come to. We, we do, for a while, we had construction meetings on stage of the theater before we had the shows. And, uh, and you could be on the stage, we could be in the construction meeting, and somebody could be in the balcony and pretty much hear what was going on in the meeting. The and acoustics that's just, are really yeah, incredible. Yeah, and it's how intimate it is. Now, you know, San Francisco, New York, I wouldn't call it competitive markets. I mean, New York is New York, and San Francisco is much smaller. But do you think there is a connection between the type of shows that make it there and and make it here. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, it's one thing to be a producer in a city with less than a million people and another to be a producer in Manhattan. You know, what's the connection between the two? I think San Francisco is known for its um, really smart audiences. I mean, I think, you know, very um, high artistic value productions can play here, similar they can play in New York. Mm -hmm. um, and there are only a few cities that I think can support that and just... Uh, so that was a real uh, reason for me to come here and come to San Francisco, because I do think that there's a like-mindedness yeah. in theater and an appreciation for theater. Now, you're a theater person. Mm -hmm. You love New York. You're from New York. Do you, do you miss it? I do miss New York sometimes, <laughs> but I'm loving San Francisco. Like, it's, you know, it's so... It's similar in a, in a lot of ways. Um, the thing I like about San Francisco is, like, the real sense of community and the close-knitness of it, you know, and I see people I, who I just met a few weeks ago and I'll see them again, and um, the one thing I do miss is that things tend to close a little early, mm -hmm. like restaurants. Oh, yeah, I mean life. Life. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that, that early, is true. But that's okay. Well, anything compared to New York closes a little bit early, but that's you're all. right. Um, before we run out of time, I want to talk to you a little bit about the specific plays. I mean, the, it, the show opened with the events mm -hmm. based on that horrible... Uh, um, murder, mass mm -hmm. murder in Norway, mm -hmm. then the object lesson, which made me want to go home and clean out every closet and drawer yeah, in my house, that's great. the Halloween kind of theme, the ghost quartet. What do we got coming up next? Next up is uh, Steve Chiffo is Lenny Bruce, and so it's this actor who plays Lenny Bruce and has just done it for a while and does it, uh, makes these, sort of reenacts the concerts that he gave. Mm -hmm. And so Lenny Bruce was at The Curran, um, where he has a famous album, yeah. Live at The Curran. Um, and so we'll be doing that uh, Nove in November, and it's 64 years, I think, to the day that Lenny played wow. that same stage. And he's still controversial after, yeah. uh, you know, more than six decades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so that's going to be great. It's going to be pretty amazing. Um, after that is Stu. Uh, the musician Stu, who was in, who is actually from California, he was at Berkeley Rep, developed the musical Passing Strange, and he has a new piece called um, Notes from a Native Son. Mm -hmm. It's Jim Bal James Baldwin, mm -hmm. um, and so we'll be doing that the first weekend in December. After that, we're doing Story Pirates, which is a family piece where... We're having teaching artists go out to schools in San Francisco, and the kids will write their own stories, and then um, they'll come to the current, and they'll be able to see professional actors perform their stories. So this isn't just for uh, hip, uh, intellectual, adult audiences. You're, you're really reaching out into the fabric of San Francisco community at all levels. Yeah, we, that's really important to us and to Carol, that we, you know, this is about the community of San Francisco, so making sure that there's something... Um, for everybody throughout the season, that it's not just targeted to one specific audience. Um, and Taylor Mack is in January, which is, he's doing a very cool piece that's, uh, it's the, he performs 
music from every decade going back to 1776. And, uh, and it's going to accumulate, I think, at the end of next year in a 24-hour marathon wow. and of it. Yeah, I mean, there, there are a lot of people who do not know Taylor Mac, but for those who are uninitiated, and especially for the LGBT audience, who's Taylor Mac? Taylor Mac is this amazing actor, writer, artist, musician, who um, is actually from Stockton, California. And, uh, and he is, he's incredible, and he, he, does, he does a mixture of things, um, but this is his show that he's creating, and we're actually a commissioner of it, and so he's workshopping it over the next 10 months. And he, this involves different community aspects of it, and uh, so we're doing the first six decades from 1776 <laughs> to whenever six decades later is. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be pretty special. Pretty cool. And he, I think, has a big following in San Francisco. We're excited uh, uh, to bring absolutely. him back. Absolutely. That's what I was going to say. There's some people who know him, you know, local boy, Stockton, yeah. uh, East Bay crowd yeah. will come over for sure. He's incredible. So once the, as you say, it's all about the bathrooms. Once the lobby is done and the mm -hmm. house is renovated, you've got big bathrooms for men and women in the current, what's going to be the first thing we see on stage? Can you? I can't tell you that. <laughs> I can't There's tell been a lot you that, of rumors. David. I, I won't lead you into that. I know. But, uh, but what are the dates that we're thinking about? We're going to reopen in January 2017. So you think that's how we, we're going to make it? We're going to make it. I was at a construction meeting today. We are going to make it. January 2017. Right. Yeah. So far, what has been the, the favorite production for you? We've only got a few moments left. I know that's hard. It's, you know, it's hard for you to have favorites in your it job. Is, it's really hard to have favorites. Um, I would say that, you know what? The, my favorite part has been walking into the space with each show and seeing it so different. I mean, Ghost Quartet right now is, um, is unbelievable. Object Lesson, where there were cardboard boxes everywhere and the audience was discovering. I mean, my favorite part is just seeing these different audiences in there for the first time, mm -hmm. discovering different types of shows. Um, so I, can't, I don't have a favorite. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's interesting. I tend to be someone who doesn't like theater that breaks the fourth wall. I was, and I, I admit, it's somewhat, somewhat conservative theater viewer. But the productions I've seen there have been so entrancing. You walk in and you are literally on stage. Yeah. If someone wants to learn more, they go online to? sfcurrent.com. And the location is right there off Union Square? Yeah, on Geary Street. Great. 445 Geary. Well, thanks for coming from Manhattan. We're glad to have I'm you and your so husband here. So thrilled to be here. Thank right. you for having me. We've been speaking to Greg Backstrom about the ongoing current, on st current under construction series at the Current Theater in San Francisco. I'm David Perry. Thanks for watching me not on stage, but on TV here every week. Good night.